The following teaching is possible thanks to the friends and partners of Spirit and Truth Fellowship International. What does the Bible say about smoking marijuana, smoking weed? Well, although the Bible, I mean, is, is, a, is the document, the Bible doesn't have the word marijuana in it. But bottom line, smoking marijuana for pleasure is wrong. Now, let's take a look and, and work through some of the points and arrive at our conclusion. So the first thing I'd like to say is that it is true, and some people say, yeah, but there's lots of drugs that affect your mind. It is true, there are many legal drugs that affect your mind. We have to understand, why would God ever want us to use a drug that would affect our mind? What God is interested in out of our lives is that we're able to serve Him. That holistically, that we can bring our lives to the table and serve God. And if our bodies are affected or we're in such pain that, that we really honestly can't focus on God and can't serve Him, then God understands why we would take a drug, a prescription drug, for example, that would affect our mind. And in that light, could, medi could marijuana be used medicinally in a way that would benefit people? I believe it certainly could. And so I'm not against marijuana as far as being used as a medicine, if it's genuinely used that way, to enable people to serve God. And that's the big key. Why would anybody want to take a mind-altering drug if it is a prescription drug? Hopefully, from God's perspective anyway, the only reason is so that they could be better able to serve God. And marijuana could certainly fall into that category. But then I've heard people say, and I've, I've looked at YouTubes on the internet where people say, but yes, but God created plants and gave them f food to people. So marijuana is certainly included in that. Well, where does that come from anyway? Well, we go all the way back to Genesis chapter 1, and in verse 29, um, here's what we read. And this, by the way, here, we've got to understand, Genesis chapter 1, this is Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. It's not our world. This is the Garden of Eden. And he says, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that's on the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in it, uh, with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the heavens, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. So it is true that God gave man and animals plants for food in the Garden of Eden. But, I mean, even in the Garden of Eden, every animal didn't eat every plant. And we weren't expected to eat every part of every plant. But there's more to the story in that. Because <laughs> we don't live in the Garden of Eden anymore. The world went through what's called the fall in the Bible, where the adversary, the devil, Satan, got control of the world. And he changed the world. And so all we've got to do is just keep reading in Genesis. So we just flip over to Genesis chapter 3. And here's what we read in verse 17. And God's speaking to Adam, and I won't read the entire verse. He says, um, You've eaten the, of the tree of which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Um, cursed is the ground because of you. So what we see in the world around us today isn't the plants necessarily from the Garden of Eden the way they were back then, but rather the way they are under the curse. And he goes on to say in verse 18, thorns and thistles shall it the earth bring forth to you. <laughs> well, yeah. And so the nature of plants changed. And so, for example, we, we know that we can't just go out and eat anything. I mean, for example, it, you, could under, you could use the same argument and say, well, poison ivy is a plant. We should be able to smoke poison ivy. <laughs> but anybody who knows about poison ivy knows that if you get poison ivy smoke in your lungs and your lungs begin to weep, you can drown in many, I won't say many people, but there have been people who have died from walking through fires, the smoke of fires where poison ivy was being burned. 
So, what, and what about, for example, mushrooms? You know, I mean, we know that there are a lot of mushrooms that you better not eat or you'll die. So just to say, well, God created it and it's a plant, therefore you can eat it. <laughs> that, that's really misusing the Bible. And the Bible isn't our words. This book is God's word. And he's going to hold us accountable for using it properly. So if we're going to use the Bible as a reason for doing things, Let's make sure that we use it properly the way God would want us to use it. Absolutely. So then, why is it wrong to smoke marijuana or weed for pleasure? Why is it wrong? Well, the primary reason is it alters your mind. You're, you don't think the same. You don't feel the same. In fact, that's why people do it. And smoking marijuana for pleasure, what happens in your mind falls into the category of drunkenness. And by the way, that's not just marijuana, but other things that people would take that completely alter their mind. It falls into the category of drunkenness. Now let me explain that. If we go to back to our Bible, we'd read Ephesians 5.18. And here's what Ephesians 5.18 says. It says, and do not get drunk with wine. And then it goes on to say, but be filled with the Spirit. So the Bible is telling us not to get drunk with wine. Why? Because it, it alters us. It alters our way of thinking. We become impaired. We become what, what the dictionary say is intoxicated. And interestingly enough, the fact that the Bible says don't be drunk with wine is an indication that it's, it's not like the Bible would say, but you can get drunk on whiskey <laughs> or you can get drunk on beer. The point is, by, by specifying wine there, what the Bible is letting us know is, I don't want you drunk on anything. And, and again, the word drunk here then, it doesn't mean just drunk from alcohol. Drunk, it, drunk is a state of the mind, an altered state of the mind. And that's true, by the way, both in Greek and in English. So, for example, if you take the Greek word where in Ephesians 5.18 it says, don't be drunk with wine, and look it up in the various usages of the Greek world, they had the same phrase as we did when we say, oh, that man is drunk on power. Well, what do we mean by that? We mean power has affected his mind. He isn't thinking straight. You know, the Greeks use the exact same phrase. Drunk on power. So when the Bible says don't get drunk, it's saying don't take things that affect your mind, that make you to where you don't think straight. And, and why? Because we're supposed to be full-time ministers of God. The Bible is going to tell us things like pray without ceasing. The Bible is going to tell us things that we need to be ready to serve God at a moment's notice. We need to be sensitive to his voice. And, and to do those things, we can't be walking around in an altered state of mind. Now another thing about the mind-altering drugs is that they can, can open you up to demons. They can open us up to demons. In fact, if you are a student of anthropology and you study other cultures other than the, the United States, whether it's Indian cultures or, well, you study other cultures, most other cultures used drugs to have a spiritual experience. That's why they took them, that's what they used them for, and they were well aware of the fact that I smoke this plant or drink this or eat this, and it opens my mind up and I have a spiritual experience. <laughs> well, that, that isn't God's spirit. God's the one that's sitting there telling you, don't do that. When you have a spiritual experience on a mind-altering drug, that's a demon. And let me tell you something. The Bible says that when the devil comes into your life, he comes to steal, kill, or destroy. Now, he may do things when he first enters in that makes him seem harmless or benign or maybe even fun. Gee, that was a, a wild experience. But, but the devil is, a, is an evil taskmaster. And if he gets into your life, he will hurt it in some way. Don't let the devil into your life. And, and taking mind-altering drugs is one a very, very real way that you can open up your mind to demons and a very real reason that God tells us not to do that. Don't get into an altered state, an intoxicated state, a drunk state by drugs or alcohol.
It can open up your life and ruin you. There's another reason why God, I believe, would not have us get involved in illegal drugs. And that is because it supports an industry that hurts people. Now, this may change someday. And I know there's a big debate now about, well, in some places, marijuana is legal. But the fact of the matter is, if you study the trade as it exists in the world today, many, many people, many, many innocent people are, are being hurt or killed because of the, of the drug trade. And we need to be aware of the fact that if we participate in that, then we're providing the money over which people are fighting, people are being killed. God wants us to have clean hands and, and a clean heart. So let's not get in, involved in a trade that, uh, as it is right now, many innocent people are being hurt. So there are many reasons from God why just smoking weed for pleasure is not the thing to do if you want to walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you.